Hi, Tantus Nav and Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome! It is time to continue talking about the history of Magic the Gathering. We've been going from set to set, talking about a little bit about the what happens with each of these sets, any kind of historical value to it, in the context of Magic the Gathering. So this week is Portal. The first Portal, I should really mention, because there were three of them, and I will go over all three of them eventually. But the first Portal here was the Beginner's Level set, released by Wizards on May 1st of 1997. It was considered a starter level set, and it was Wizards' first attempt to cater to aspiring or newer players that might not know as much about the rules. It was much simpler and less expanded than a core or a starter set. It had 215 black-bordered cards in it. Now, aesthetically and uh, mechanically, it was much simpler than any of the other sets of Magic. It included no instants, no enchantments, and no artifacts. It was sorceries, creatures, and lands, effectively, is all it has. And the sorceries themselves were different than your average sorceries. There were some sorceries that it listed different times you could play them. So it would said, on this sorcery, you could play it more like an instant than rather what it is. And the cards have since been eroded. All the cards have been to fix them and make them more tournament legal. This includes a lot of the sorceries that some of them have indeed become instants now because of the nature of how they were written. Now, also, no creature types were there. All, all creatures just had summon creature on them. So, creature types have also been eroded in. Now, many of the terms on the cards are actually simplified. They're made in these simpler words made to make it easier for people to learn it. Unfortunately, when people were learning this, this did cause some problems as when people would move from the starter level set in order to the normal sets, they wouldn't understand the same way. They wouldn't know the new terms, the terms that were the actual terms of magic, and this did cause some problems. Now, aesthetically, there were some other differences. The power and toughness had a little sword and shield next to them to mark that they were, of course, power and toughness, respectively. Also, when we got into the text boxes, the text about what was going on with the card is in bold, and any kind of flavor text was not. Also, the flavor text was separated from the normal card text by a dark line. Now, Portal was not considered any kind of tournament legal until October 20th of 2005. At that point in time, when enough erratas were out and Magic then considered it legal for vintage and legacy play. So now, if you do have any Portal cards, you can play with them in, le in legacy and vintage and it would be completely legal. Now, of course, they released boosters for Portal, but they also released a two-player starter set. This two-player starter set came in two different forms. The original form just had a two 35-card decks, separate decks, pre-made ones. It, of course, had a few other things, some play mats, a rule book, but there was a gift box set that also included two actual booster packs of Portal. Now, there were some actual difference between the two-player starter set and the normal booster pack sets, regardless of if it's part of the gift box or not, the booster packs. There were seven cards in the starter set that were slightly different in format than their seven counterparts that were found in the booster packs. An odd little difference that existed. Now, of course, there were three illustrations on the booster packs, if you want to see the different types of booster packs there are. Each of the booster packs came with one of ten little cards which gave deck building tips. Effectively, they're little tips telling you different combinations of colors of cards and giving you tips and tricks about building decks and playing with those colors of cards. Now, there was one other portal product that was released by Wizard. They were giving away for free demo game boosters. Demo game boosters had 24 different cards in them. Of course, another six which had, which were slightly different again similar to how it was between the two-player gift box set and the booster pack, so there were six here that were different. But it was a set of 24 cards that you would get these boosters and get, of course, a selection of those 24 cards, similar to a normal booster pack, except less choice of cards. And there were a little gifts that were handed out in order to help you build up your game effectively. So they were, of course, free gifts. Now, Portal was the first market, the first time that marketed a, that marked a huge ad campaign by Magic, by Wizards. They released commercials for Magic on MTV and with some popular television shows. This was the first time they were reaching the general mainstream audience with knowledge about Magic the Gathering with these commercials. Now, yes, 
this was a good for beginners. It did help get a lot of beginners in the door, but it turns out that a lot of experienced players were actually using Portal to teach people. They were using it as a teaching tool. The only unfortunate thing is the experienced players would use the actual terms and not the terms that were on the cards, which would cause a lot of confusion for the early players and cause them a lot of problems. So the, the, the terminology that existed in Portal in itself became a problem because they simplified it too much and they didn't keep it consistent with what the players should know about when they move on to being more experts. Now there really wasn't a story to Portal, there are some little quotes on it, but they don't really add anything to a story, and there weren't any new mechanics or any kind of themes to these decks. There were a few match type pairs. There's of course Wrath of God and Armageddon is one of the match of pairs, the dis White Destructions. Baleful Stairs and Withering Gaze is a match, Flash Fires and Boiling Sea, and one mixed pair of Hurricane and Earthquake. Mixed pair meaning they were sort of opposite pairs. Now, this set contained a good number of reprints. It, came, it contained a good number of, of functional reprints, cards with different names, but the same exact ability. And it contained a number of cards which would actually move on and become regulars in a lot of core sets. So there was an influence of Portal that existed in sets to come because there were some cards that were done in Portal originally that did get reprinted in sets after it. So let's talk about some of the cards which are important to know about in Portal. First off, there's Blaze. Blaze is an X mana cost card. It does X damage to target creature or player. It's just as good as Fireball, Disintegrate, any of those kinds. Doesn't have to switch the special abilities, but it's pretty decent. There's Ebon Dragon. It's a 5-4 flyer when it comes to play. Target player discards a card from their hand. There's Exhaustion. During target opponent's next turn, they can't untap creatures or lands. Jungle Lion. It was a 2-1 for 1 green mana. It couldn't block. It was really good and it still seemed to say, said to be very good. One of the better cards in the set actually. Lava Axe. It does 5 damage to a player. Just as simple as that. There's Personal Tutor. You search your library for a sorcery, reveal it, and put it on the top of your library. Phantom Warrior. This is one of the ones that's been printed, reprinted a lot since then. It's a 2-2 unblockable. Same can be said for Raging Goblin. One mana for a 1-1 one, one haste goblin. Again, that's showed up a lot in core sets since this printing here. There's Snapping Drake, a 3-2 flyer that's also seen some reprints. There's Volcanic Hammer. It does 3 damage to target creature or player. Wind Drake, a 2-2 flyer. Wood Elves. Wood Elves, when they come into play, you search your library first and put it into play. Another one that's got some reprints since then that's actually pretty decent. Anaconda. I did want to mention this one because it's it's really only a 3-3 Swamp Walk, but it's one of the ones that has the different format cards between the two-player starter set and the booster packs. Now there's King's Assassin. King's Assassin is one I want to mention because it is a functional reprint. It's effectively the Royal Assassin from the Unlimited set. It's during a main phase, before combat, you can tap a destroy target tap creature. So it does have a little bit more restriction, but it's a functionally it's a reprint of Royal Assassin. There's Elite Cat Warriors. This is another one I wanted to mention. It's a 2-3 Forest Walk. It's another one of the ones that has different formats to the readings down at the bottom in between the two sort of sets of this. And the last one I want to mention is, of course, Stormcrow. Stormcrow is reprinted from uh, Alliances. It's a 1-2 flyer, and it has a lot of fans. It's actually it's thought to be one of the, the better small flying commons that are out there. So, I mean, I, I find it a pretty decent card, too. So if you're interested in it, Stormcrow. So that's it for today. I went over the history of Magic the Gathering, the set Portal, which was a beginner's set, a starter set, made to bring people in, and it did a good job of doing that, but unfortunately it wasn't perfect, and it did cause some problems in and of itself. So, great idea, not the perfect execution. Next time, we'll continue talking about another set in Magic. So if you need questions, comments, anything you say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, share support for the channel, the Empire, and the work I do. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.